Tonight, I'm angry because... My life was a lie. She lied to her son his entire life. Her secret? The identity of his father. And it tore this family apart. I'm so upset right now that I'm being Hug made out to look like a liar. This whole thing is a lie. This whole thing is a lie. But your greatest fear has come upon you. He is hurt. What you have to acknowledge to your son was that I made a choice for you based on my hurt, my shame. Heal your wounds about being incomplete. The only thing you have to do now is confess it fully and totally to your son. Don't ever do it again. Next. Life happens to everybody, even me. Life didn't care that I had written a bunch of books, traveled the world speaking, married the love of my life, lived in my dream home, and made a bunch of money. And then life left me broke and feeling broken. The only way to get back was to do the work. I did my work and put my life back together piece by piece. I am Iyamla Van Zandt, and I am here to help you do your work. Wendy out here in Dallas, Texas. Cowboy country. <laughs> I'm here in Dallas because a family secret has been revealed. And like all family secrets, there is some destruction. Coming up tomorrow, we have another chance for you to win $1,000. Jose Chavez is well known here in the Big D as DJ JC on a popular radio talk show. Jose recently let his listeners in on his family secret. When I was 23, I was informed by my mother that the man who raised me is, was not, in fact, my biological father. I would say my first emotion was, it was anger and confusion, and I felt, I felt betrayed. That was just the beginning. The devastation of the secret soon tore the family apart. Jose hasn't spoken to his mother and his sister in five months. Jose told me all about it in a letter, asking me for help. I have less than 24 hours to fix this mess. Oh, my God. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Are you familiar yeah. with JC's family situation? I am familiar, and he's in a, he has a very common family situation, which is a family secret mm -hmm. that's revealed. Mm -hmm. and does a damage to the relationship. Devastation Nation is what I like to call it. Really? What, what do you feel, find, think was devastating about it? Um, being raised with a father and then being told that he's not my father and then another gentleman entering my life and trying to build a relationship with him that ended up ruining my relationship with my mother. I'd call that pretty devastating. After a lifetime of absence, Jose met his biological father and began a relationship with him. He also began sharing his experiences on the radio, even the moment he introduced his biological father to his newborn son. This is a, this is a famous bio dad right here. Jorge. Hello. This enraged his mother and his sister. Tempers flared on both sides, and soon there was a flurry of angry, nasty letters. I, I believe her words were, I am rubbing it in their faces. And then, for the last five months, silence. Jose fears that his newborn son may never have a relationship with his family. I'm sure that me being on the radio and talking about my personal life all the time probably didn't help. Well, there's a lot of work, and the reunion's going to happen tonight, and I, I hope it goes better than it feels in my stomach right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Here's the truth about healing. It has to hurt at first. Right. But once the healing has occurred, you don't remember the pain. Hopefully the healing will start tonight for you, JC. Before Jose and his family come together tonight, I want to talk to him. I sense that Jose is holding on to so much emotion and that he's really afraid to let go. I've also asked him to bring some family pictures because I've got a plan. So I have this picture of a pregnant teenage girl, 17. Mm -hmm. You know who that is? That's my mom. Pregnant, unmarried. Do you have any idea? what that feels like. Absolutely not. None. Let me see if I got a picture of the baby's father in here. I don't think you're going to find a picture of the baby's father. Why not? Because he was not there. 
Jose's mother was 17 and his father was just 15 when she got pregnant. Their families forbid them to be together. So who are you angry at today? Obviously, I'm angry towards my mother because of this situation. Wait a minute. Angry at the 17-year-old, frightened, terrified, alone, sad, hurt, shame-ridden, guilt-driven, 17-year-old. And imagine, he's not there. Nope. He wasn't there for 20-some years. So how much of what she's getting from you should be shared with him? Because it seems to me he gets off the hook for not being there. He gets off the hook for being 15 and afraid. He gets off the hook for what his mother did. He gets off the hook. Let me, let me see something here, cuz. Can I touch your chest? Mm -hmm. How's your heart doing, Jose? It's hurt. Yeah. I just want to be able to have a relationship with my father, and I want my mom to be okay with it. I want to go back to the day that your mom told you your dad was not your father. Tell me what happened to your heart on that day. Broke. Broke, yeah. Come on, it's okay, Jose. Huh? Close your eyes and let it rip. Angry. I'm angry because. Come on. My life was a lie. Yes. I don't trust people. So the one person I could trust in my life was my mom. Yeah. And to know that she lied to me my entire life, it ruined everything. Yeah. It wasn't just my mom lying to me, it was everybody. Everybody knew except me. So when you can't trust your family, who can you trust? I realized that my father could walk away so easily. Part of the reason I wanted a relationship with him is because I wanted to see him that I could do it without him. Yes. It turned out just fine without our dad. You know what you have, my beloved? What? A desire to heal. So that this pattern in pathology does not repeat itself for your son. You're doing this for him. I want Jose to get this. I mean, really get it. So I'm thinking that by creating a visual story using pictures and words, he'll be able to connect to his feelings about his past and his mother. I have an assignment for you. I want you to tell me, right here. Tell me what the lie was and how you feel about it. Can I have a hug? Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Coming up, All right. for the first time in five months, Jose and his family come face to face. But first, I have some tough questions for his mother about this family secret. Why in the blazing bejesus would you wait 23 years to tell this child about his father? I'm on the road again. This time it's in Dallas, Texas. And I have only 24 hours to help Jose Chavez and his family heal the wounds of a devastating family secret. Jose's mother, Patricia, became pregnant with him at 17. Patricia's parents would not allow her to have a relationship with the baby's father, her teenage boyfriend. Patricia eventually married Alex, another young man from her town. And she kept it a secret from Jose for 23 years that Alex was not his biological father. She lied to me my entire life. It ruined everything. So I'm on my way to the uh, hotel to meet with Jose's mother he's mad at and the sister he doesn't think should be involved and the dad who made him the man he is today. 
How's everybody doing? Uh, nervous about how this is going to end up. Sad. Disappointed. Sad about. It's OK. 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 There's so many things have been going on. And, and uh, it's just something that we never expect for him to act like that. It was a lie. You want to put it that way. That's the only way to put it. When the truth is covered, it's a lie. This, you know, falls in your lap. I know. So let me say this. There's some parts of this that I want her and I to talk about mother to mother, woman to woman, OK? So I'm going to ask you guys to excuse us, OK? Kiss your baby bye. <laughs> She's in good hands, I promise you. I, I got to ask you this question. Why in the blazing bejesus would you wait 23 years to tell this child about his father? 23 years, why? I thought it was the best for him. I didn't find out about my adoption until I was 23, 24. You were adopted. I was adopted. And to be honest with you, I am so thankful that I didn't know before. And like most mothers, we impose upon our children the thing that was good or is good for us without considering how they may receive it. Correct. OK. Can you see that for 23 years, you lived a lie? Yeah. Have you ever acknowledged that, just that raw, to your son? No, not in that sense. No, I haven't. And have you ever acknowledged to your son the lie I lived hurt you? No. My scrapbook. <laughs> I love my scrapbook. <laughs> Tell me what it was like for this woman. 17? be pregnant and alone. What was it like for her? Very hard. Very hard. Can you see her there? Look at her. Tell me how she feels. Shame. Shame and, and guilt. Very sad. Yes. Lonely. Yes. Hurt. Yeah. Tell me about her relationship with her son's father. I loved him yes. a lot. And I felt feel like that he just left me. Yes. <laughs> with from something that was from both of us. She was hurt. Yes. She was hurt, yes. and he didn't do anything. And I don't care if he was 16 years old. He didn't do anything to be close to my son, ever. I get that. Ever. I get that. And then he turned 20, and then he turned 30, and 40. And then my son looks for him. Are you kidding me? Why can't Jose forgive me for all this? And he can He doesn't forgive. know about it. Because you've never really told the naked truth about it. See, one of the things that we do as parents is we assume that our children know things that they really don't know. Because we tell our story from our perspective today and not from our perspective back then. So many of us live our family patterns. You didn't have your natural father throughout your life. 
and unknowingly, you denied Jose his. Family patterns like family secrets repeat themselves. They repeat. Your mother taught you how to lie, and you lied to your son. That's the naked truth. Let's call a thing a thing. You lied to your son. I get that. But what you have to acknowledge to your son, your baby boy, was that I made a choice for you based on my hurt, my shame, my guilt, my loneliness. That was not my choice to make. Because until you can do that, this cannot be healed. Take a breath. Tell me what it was like the first time you looked in that face. <laughs> the most beautiful thing. And when I saw him, I just said, from now on, it's you and me, and I'll do anything. In just two hours, Patricia's going to see her son, Jose, for the first time in five months. So I want her to reflect. I've given her some scrapbook pages that I started that will help her get clear about her past, the secret, the lie, and what she needs to say to her son. This is not a lie. I love him. I know you do. But this is built on the lie. So I want you to write it for me. You gotta confess the lie, whatever they were. Let's tell the truth, mama. We can do this. Stand up for me for one minute. Mama bear to mama bear. You did what you knew how to do to protect yourself and your cubs. So I wanna give you a big mama bear hug to that 17-year-old. <sighs> I didn't get it back then. Yeah. Coming up, your family's here. Honor thy mother. It's been a busy day in Dallas. So much work to do to support Jose and his family in their healing after a devastating family secret was revealed. When I was 23, I was informed by my mother that the man who raised me is, was not, in fact, my biological father. Jose, a popular radio DJ, connected with his biological father and started a relationship with him. He also shared all the details of their relationship over the radio. This caused his mother and sister to become furious and resentful. They then began a series of hurtful texts and emails back and forth. Phone calls were not returned, and soon each side felt they had been abandoned by the other. Okay, so here's an example of the nastiness that's going on in this family. This is a letter that Jose's mother wrote to Jose's wife, Kinsey. Poor Jose. He had such a miserable life because we couldn't give him everything he wanted. He is full of <laughs> So Jose fired back to his mom. You turned my sister against me, and I don't even know what you tell my dad. Ma, you need help. <laughs> when there's a breakdown in the family, it's the ones you love the most that hurt you the deepest. It's been five months since they've spoken. There have been generations of lies passed down in this family. It ends tonight. So I'm going here now to meet Jose and his wife and his baby. Ooh, ooh a baby. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. How, are How are you? you? Wow. How are you? I'm Kenzie. Hi, Kenzie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. In just a few moments, Jose will be reunited with his mom, dad, 
and sister, and it's been five months since they've spoken. That's a long time when there's a new baby in the family. So this is the first time your sister's gonna see her nephew? Yeah. So what's your greatest wish for this today? I just want him to have a good relationship with his grandparents, and I hope that ours can make its way back to what it used to be. So what's your greatest fear? I guess rejection. I guess uh, this whole thing not working out. Going back to square one. Well, that's not going to happen. Good. That's not going to happen. Here. Take your baby. <laughs> Come on, let's go meet Grandma. <laughs> This is your nephew. Hi, Patty. Mm -hmm. Hi. Everything's gonna be all right. <laughs> hmm? Love you. Everything's gonna be all right. Love you, too. Hi, Kinsey. Hi. Honor thy mother. Cheers. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Tell him. Let him know. But what? What are you mad about? I still am so lost on why you got mad at me in the first place. We need you. We call you, you don't pick up. We text you, you don't want to answer. You haven't called me in five months, Mom. In five months, but what about the other six years? When do you ever call? You mean to tell me there's been six years you didn't call your mother? No, I called her. And? It wasn't as frequent as it used to be, obviously because I had anger towards what happened. It's a, it was a lot to take in, Mom. Come here, baby. What's the matter? Tell him. Tell him what you told me today. I remember about the message that you sent me still, even when you said you're sorry, but that still really hurt me. Do you know yeah. why he was angry? Yeah, but that doesn't mean you have to get away from me. I wasn't getting away from you, Alexa. The one person I did try to keep in touch with was, was, was you. And I tried to get you to open up to me, and I tried to be that big brother, and I tried to get you to tell when me about your friends. When did you try to open up to me? I would call you at least twice a week, Alexa. No, you wouldn't. And you Forget what happened yesterday. Do it today. Do it today. Do it now. Because I'm not going to believe that the phone failed you in the midst of your dire need. Yeah, <laughs> Tell the truth. Can, Tell the truth. Hug, yeah, Hug your sister. No, I, Hug your sister. Hug your sister. I can't because I'm so upset right now that I'm being Hug made out to look like a liar. Well, you know what? Then you're making her out to look like a liar. Then show me the text messages. Hold your, hold your sister and stop trying to be right. Get off your position. I'm not trying to be right. I'm not trying not to that. be a liar. Remember, I'm, not, I'm making, I, I feel that. like I'm always remember a bad that. guy. Remember that. Remember that. Put your hands around your sister. I can't. Love on your he sister. Can. Yes, you can. Don't yes, you can. do something he doesn't want to he do. He wants to hold you. He just doesn't know how to do. He's mad at the wrong thing. I'm a hug him. Come on. <laughs> I know, not about, listen. I know, y'all not, I don't know how this is gonna be fixed if I'm being called a liar. Jose, there is no right or wrong. Then why am this I the one who made out to be the wrong This whole thing is a lie. This whole thing is a lie. Stop trying to be right or wrong. Let's start right now. Right here, right now. Your sister's hurting and she needs you. Your sister's hurting and she needs you. And Do I you see I'll... the damage a lie causes? And now look at this. Look at it. One little lie. One little secret. Say this with me. Forgive me. Forgive me. For anything that I may have said to hurt you, or any actions that I may have done to hurt you. I forgive you. OK, look at your brother. Tell him, forgive me. Forgive me? Yes. For anything I've done or said to hurt you. 
and for being in the middle of this mess. It's your fault. I forgive you. Now can you hug your sister? Are we okay? Coming up, I take Patricia to the edge and beyond. What are you letting go of? What are you letting go of? And to a place in her past that she needs to clean up. If you take this hand, you gotta leave the fear in the water. If you take this hand, you have to leave the lie in the water. If you take that hand. For 23 years, Patricia lied to her son, Jose, about the identity of his biological father. This morning, I asked Jose and Patricia to do some homework, to make a scrapbook, a new family album, based on a family history that was grounded in the truth. Share with me and your mom what you uh, got yes. out of that. Looking at this picture of my mother as a pregnant teenager standing next to her brother looks innocent. But there's an enormous lie screaming out at me. And that picture of my mom holding me as a newborn is beautiful. She looks happy, she looks confident. Lies. She was not happy inside. She was not confident. She was a complete opposite. She was not ready to face the whispers, the stares, and the rumors. She was just a girl. Wow. So he understands. He really does. Tell her what you told me today about that guy, the one in here. He's angry. And I'm angry at you for what happened. And I know it's beyond your control and beyond my father's control. But this hurts. This is angry. Can you see just that part? Yeah. Whew, we're making progress. <laughs> Jose really wants to heal this breakdown between he and his mother, but she is stuck. But I believe if I can get her completely out of her comfort zone, perhaps she can move forward. I want to tell you something. When I was 16, I got pregnant. My mother, God bless her, made me stay in school and go to work, and it didn't help me heal the shame and guilt I felt about having a baby at 16. So when I was 19, I met a wonderful young man in the service. So I married him. He went off to Vietnam and came back, a heroin addict. And I just couldn't do that. Two years later, I met another lovely man who didn't care that I had two children. I raised my daughter believing that that man was her father. And when she was 30 years old and her father came back into her life, and I had to explain to her now who he was. She hated me for it. It was because I told a lie. So I really do understand where you are. It's not something that I'm hiding. You know what I mean? I, I was scared. I was scared. Of I what? Of him being hurt. This. But your greatest you fear has come upon you. Exactly. He is hurt. Exactly. I know. But there was many reasons why I did it. But the most important one is that because I saw he never showed interest in his son. I lived through all this. He didn't. Take your eyes off of him. You see, part of the problem is your relationship with him was incomplete. Have you ever had an opportunity to say to him what you felt and what you thought about him leaving you? No. No. I don't care about Wash him. it off. I want you to wash it off. I want you to wash that relationship yeah, with him off. Go ahead. Walk over there and wash it off. Go ahead. Where? Just walk across the pool. Walk across the pool. Come on, wade in the water, boo. Because it's infecting your life. Clean in that entire relationship off of you. The past, the history, the lie, the shame, the guilt. 
I'm gonna wait for you on the other side. How about that? It's your choice. You know, I mean, this, this is years, almost 30 years. Forget the past 30 years. What about today? Come on. To this side. Come on. No. Wait a minute. What are you letting go of? Come on. Stomp it out. What are you letting go of? I can't hear you. And what else? When you come to this side of the pool, I want you cleansed and clear. Cleansed and clear. Alex, come here. <laughs> I want you to catch her when she comes out. <laughs> if you take this hand, you gotta leave the fear in the water. If you take this hand, you gotta leave the anger in the water. If you take this hand, you have to leave the lie in the water, if you take that hand. Come on. It's your name. <laughs> Come on. It's in the water. And the only thing you have to do now is confess it fully and totally to your son. Got that? I can't tell where Patricia is right now. Will she withdraw or face the lie she told Jose head on? Only time will tell. But there's another participant in the lie that I need to check in on. That's Alex, the man who's been there for Jose all his life. So how are you guys? It's been really sad for me. Well, what makes I'm you sad? I'm not mad at him. Do I'm, you know I'm... he's not mad at you? Mm -hmm. Are you mad at him? No. So why is it that everybody's mad at mom? And, and she seems to be the only one being held responsible and accountable. He participated in the lie. I know you participated in the lie, but I feel like I owed you because you raised me as your own and never blinked an eye over it. I did that because I love you and because I love your mama. The past is already gone. We had to step up and move on with our lives. I don't want anybody to be hurt or sad. I just, I just want a little peace of mind on our lives and move on and be happy. That's what I want. I love you. Love you too, Dad. Coming up, this from all of you is very nasty. Don't ever do it again. As the sun sets in Texas, my time with the Chavez family is quickly coming to an end. It's been an emotional day. Jose and his mother and sister are finally talking after months of silence, all caused by hateful messages they sent each other. Now that they've broken bread together, it's time to call a thing a thing. So where are we now? Where's everybody now? <laughs> I'm feeling I'm better. I'm feeling better than when I first came here. What's new for you? What have you learned? What do you understand? How hurt he is. We still need to work on a lot of things. Remember that? I remember writing this for yes. Yeah. To who? My mom. So you start out there with some pretty nasty stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> remember that? Yes. OK, and what is that? That's a letter I wrote to Kinsey. To her? Yes. You wrote this woman yes. a letter about her husband. Don't ever do it again. I won't. And I learned my lesson. Don't ever do it again. This, from all of you, is very nasty. 
in, in some ways, it looks to me like the lie, the secret being revealed was one level, but the nastiness that it brought to the surface is a whole nother animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is so clear and so beautiful. I want your son to see this. This is what your mom did today. I gave her homework like I gave you homework. But do you see the writing? What, what did yeah. she write there? I was young and felt alone and ended up facing life with a lie. A lie that hurt you even though that was the last thing I wanted to do. I loved you and I love you more than you can ever imagine. You were my everything. In a way, I was driven to believe that a lie was a lot better than the truth. A lot of things were said and done, and they caused pain. We are hurting, but you'll always be my nano, and I'll, and I'll always be your mom. We love you, and I wish we could be the family we've once been. This is not a lie, Jose. That is from the heart. And you've got to make the distinction between the two things. What you had and what you got and what they gave you and your sister, that's not the lie. The family pattern was the lie. Well, sometimes we lie to try to make things better. I don't, I don't think she did it to hurt me. Yeah. But do you get that she was taught to lie? Yeah. She repeated a pattern without knowing she was repeating a pattern. That's right. Alex, can you change seats with Jose for a minute? You got to do some little healing over here with your mama. I know you feel like I'm pulling away from you and that you feel that I don't show my love to you. You're a part of me. I'm not out to hurt you or get you. I'm on your team. What do you have to say to him? Look at your baby. I need to come over here. I need to be closer to you. Move over. I'm going to sit right here so you know I got your back. I want you to look at your baby. And what did we talk about today? That in order to heal this, you have to do what? To say that I say a lie. No, tell him. Not to say that I say a lie. Tell him. I lied to you. For a long time. Yes, for a long time. I know I broke your heart. <laughs> and I betrayed you, trust him. <laughs> Please forgive me. I forgive you. I love you. I love you too. I always will. Chavez family may look like many of yours, where a secret or a lie has fanned the flame of a breakdown. Finally, with Patricia and Jose, there's now an open door to healing. There's work to be done, like stop hiding behind those nasty messages they send each other and say what they mean. Can I have the nastiness behind you, please? Yeah, I just need the nastiness behind you. We're not going to involve people in all little drama. And we're going to build a nice, lovely, wonderful, peaceful, cohesive family so we don't repeat this pattern. So I just want to get rid of the nastiness. Now, you've got to keep talking and keep working. You know, it's not going to go away, but at least the door is open. Anything you need to say? I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> is that what you need to say? Is there a translation? Yes. <laughs> He's fine. I'm a grandmother. I know they make noise. He's probably ready for bed. You see, because it's really all about him. Yep. Really, it is. All of this, all the tears, all the healing, all the blessing, it's all about him. If you were to bless him, if you were to make a wish for him, what would it be? 
بیشابی جست بیشاب. We're having a great life. What's your blessing? Your wish for him? I'm just happy we broke the cycle. He's gonna grow up with his dad and his mom, and there's no lies. My blessing for you is that you continue to be the glue that holds this family together. And that every time they see that little smile in your face, that they want to be better people for you. And that everybody here remembers that you are the most important thing in their world. Dear Grandma. <laughs> This is just the beginning, y'all. Remember your commitment to each other. Yeah? So if you guys all get together, I'm going to take a picture so we can start a whole new page in the family album. How about that? All right. All right, come on closer. <laughs> yeah, good. Oh, my God. That's a wrap. <laughs> Yolanda did an amazing job, and she opened up my eyes. And I'm gonna look at my mother a whole in a whole different light. And I did go into this whole process a little skeptical, especially when I first met Yolanda, because she she tells it how it is. I, I, I expected her, I guess, to be on my side the whole time, and no, she's not on anybody's side. She's she's here to fix things. It's just the beginning, but at least we're talking, and it's gonna take some time. Family secrets sure do muddy the water. And when you get right down to it, it's nobody's fault. Nobody really wants it to happen, but it does happen. And when it does, it only takes one person to step forward. And if they do, everybody else will benefit from the healing. So if you're in some muddy waters today, remember this. Stay in peace, not peaceful.